Hey everyone, welcome to Encore, and today we're going to talk about airbrush compressors. Hey everyone, welcome back. So an airbrush compressor is another important equipment that you're going to need in order for you to do airbrush makeup. It's basically your main source for that high pressurized air. And today I'm just going to point out some key features that you need to look for when you're out in a market and you're ready to buy your airbrush system. Now there are a lot of different airbrush compressors out in the market and they can vary from you know, just the smallest kind that pretty much fills a basketball to, you know, the bigger boys, you know, airbrush compressors which can pretty much handle car painting or doing some really intricate graphic work or graphic designs in a car. And then there are the in-betweens which are used mainly for, you know, all sorts of media, whether it's shirt painting, you know, that you see in amusement parks when you get that airbrush shirts or jackets and baseball caps. To like nail art, there's a lot of people out there, you know, who prefers to have some intricate designs, you know, like a landscape in their nails, and of course, you know, an airbrush is involved in make in doing those. And then of course there's makeup, wherein it's probably the most flawless application in makeup there is. And it's very, very widely used in, you know, TV, television shows, um, in movies these days, especially of the uh, high definition uh, quality to airbrush makeup. So, I'm going to feature my airbrush system, which I highly recommend for you guys to check out. And this is the Iwata, and it's the SmartJet Studio Series. Now, this is probably the most popular system, or an air compressor system that, uh, you know, it's widely used by makeup artists. And again, Iwata is, another, is a company, actually. There's a few, but Iwata is probably one of the largest and the more popular brands that manufactures airbrush equipment, from airbrush guns to airbrush compressors and the many other accessories used in airbrushing. Okay, so before I go on, I just want to explain the basics of how an air compressor works. And this is how it works. Basically, it just sucks in air right into this chamber and it's in a filtered kind of like compartment. And then that air is stored right into this tank where it's pressurized. And then, of course, that gets released into an air hose. All right. And then right into your gun, wherein it's mixed internally with a makeup product. And then that gets blown into fine micronized mist. And basically, it's pit like mimicking a pixel in a picture so that's why it looks flawless when you apply it so now for the bells and whistles don't get intimidated by all this stuff because they have great uses for okay and that's what this video is all about because i wanted to point that out now with the studio series especially the smart jet one thing i like about it is that it's so light and it's definitely mobile and you can pretty much hold it with one hand all right and another feature I like are these suction cup feet because you can just place this in any surface, flat surface, put a little pressure in it, and then it's going to hold. Okay, so that way it's a lot more stable. It's not going to shake and rattle all over the place once it's on. And uh, another feature that I like on this unit is that it's got an automatic shut off system wherein once the machine determines that it's not being used for about two minutes, it just basically turns itself off. So, um, if that happens, all you need to do is just pretty much, you know, turn it back on by repressing the power button, which is conveniently located right on the top right here. Okay, and then another feature is that it's got a handle. So again, if you're a makeup artist, you just need to basically just lift it and walk around, you know, trying to chase your brides if you're doing weddings and stuff, <laughs> running around and whatnot. So that's definitely... Um, convenient. Of course, you know, you can just basically lift this and put this in a small area because it's so compact that it'll just fit in any corner. Okay, another feature is that it's got a built-in airbrush gun holder right here, which is great because, you know, you don't know where to put your airbrush gun if you don't have it, if you don't have a holder, and you can't just put it on the side because, you know, the product's going to spill. And you can just 
cradle the airbrush gun just like that right into the built-in holder and you know if you're doing like a color change per se or if you're mixing colors to match or whatever then you can just easily cradle your airbrush gun right into the built-in holder okay so moving on to other important things that you need to look for when you get an airbrush compressor there are going to be two hoses okay one is a hose that connects the air chamber right into a valve and then one that connects from the valve right into your airbrush gun so the first hose that's really important is the one that's connected to the main air cha chamber and the feature that you need to look for is that it needs to be coiled why because an airbrush compressor sucks air into the chamber and air contains a lot of moisture you know especially when it's humid you know it's going to be wet air per se and then of course that moisture also gets built up right into the air chamber and when it gets blown out of the tank the coiled um, hose is basically going to help kind of collect those moisture okay if this is a straight hose that pressurized air is just going to shoot out pretty much wet you know it's got going to have the moisture in it and you don't want that all right you want clean high pressurized air when you're doing airbrush makeup okay now here's what I'm talking about this air coil or air hose is attached to a valve and then the other hose which is a straight line hose is basically the one that's attached to your airbrush gut okay now this is another gadget that you need to make sure that your equipment is equipped with <laughs> all right and basically it's got a pressure gauge regulator which you need now this is important a lot of air compressors are out there that doesn't have this and people need to realize that this is very important because different parts of the face and the body if you're doing you know body painting or anything like that requires different pressure okay and the air pressure is measured by pounds per square inch all right or PSI okay now for the face you're going to need you know between 10 to 15 PSI is the safest a lot of people use this 18 which is okay but 10 to 15 is recommended and then for the eye area like in the lid if you're doing you know airbrush eyeshadow or anything like that it requires less than that you don't want anything higher because it's going to pretty much sandblast your face per se or air blast your face you know your skin and that's not good so for like the eye area you're going to need between 6 and 10 PSI's all right to make it really really safe for makeup application in the lid area now for the more detailed parts and more sensitive area like eyelining you know top and lower and mascara application you want even lower than that you want between 3 PSI's to 6 PSI's and that's it okay and if you don't have this you're not going to know how much air pressure is coming out of your system so you know definitely an important um, part of an airbrush compressor that you need to look for is that it's got a pressure gauge now along with the pressure gauge there is a built-in moisture trap so the moisture that's going around the coils you know is being trapped in the coil but for a final filter per se it gets into a filter right here an air filtration um, unit that's built in here and then all the extra moisture basically gets trapped in the valve and this glass part right here now with the studio series in the smart jet line you control the air right here so basically there's a valve that has a knob that you basically adjust the air and of course that adjusts the air right into your pressure gauge right here and that's how you can control whether you need 15 psi or 10 psi or 6 psi or 3 psi okay so that's very very important now there's a lot of personal size systems out there that doesn't have all these features that's very important or at least in my honest opinion it's very important in airbrush makeup system now there's a lot of different makeup companies once again that commercializes or uh, sells a personal size airbrush system and they are so expensive they can vary from two hundred and fifty dollars to about four hundred dollars 
okay? And they don't have all these bells and whistles that's really, you know, important in airbrush makeup application. So I recommend just, you know, really checking out the regular compressors much like this, which is widely used by many artists of different media. And uh, it's a lot cheaper. It's like, you know, you can, you can find these from $175 to about $230, $250 the most. But average is about $200. And this one's about uh, $209 at Dixie Art. Okay, so that's all I'm going to have for you guys today, and thanks for joining me, and I hope this video helps out those of you guys who are looking into getting an airbrush system of their own. So, until next time, I'll see you guys soon. Bye!